Welcome back to GXP. I'm Ghost. I'm Krista. We back. And well, honestly, it's been a quite a bit of time since the last episode, and I'm not even gonna do promises anymore about when the next one's gonna come out. They just come out as they come out. Now <laughs> we're busy uh, people, far... and by busy, a lot of busy. I've been in my cafe quite a bit on twitch.tv melody ghost but you know <laughs> it's almost like start off and but, if you're um, watching the podcast i've obviously been streaming here for like the past month straight like 10 hour plus streams playing final fantasy and that's had me in a chokehold and before that it was persona obviously but we'll get we'll to that when we get, get to that <laughs> um so i guess we're starting off my section so to start off i would like to say that a decent amount of stuff some interesting stuff did drop a lot of it I haven't heard yet, but it's still nice to point it out because of the fact of like, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Be, I'm gonna have some very, I'm gonna have a really good time listening to some of this stuff. Okay, so at time of recording, when we are recording this episode, Future and Metro Booming just dropped. We don't trust you, and this, I, that's the, the one thing I've heart. heard that's dropped this week. The one the stuff that comes along with that. We're gonna get uh, into that. <laughs> That that war is gonna be interesting. Tyler dropped her self-titled project. Matt Champion dropped the project. Shakira dropped the project. And Speed, <laughs> I show Speed dropped the project. I don't want to be. I don't want to be that person. I, I I don't. I didn't listen to a lot of it. It sounds, but I did check out a bit of it before the podcast started. It sounds interesting. I will give it that. It definitely sounds interesting. It's not a. It's definitely not an offensive project. I'll say that. I. It goes past one my way, and I, I'll, it's definitely a sound I wasn't expecting. And I can say that I, I don't know if that's a good or bad thing, but coming from Speed, I think it might be a good thing. I guess it's a very, like I said, it's a very inoffensive sound. It's a very inoffensive sound, to be honest. Yeah. Um, Jonah Lucas dropped the project. I wasn't really a big fan of it, but I'm not gonna get that big into it because Jonah Lucas fan, Jonah Lucas fans are insane. <laughs> and i like him typically yeah uh but i also i just feel like this project was a bit weird that's the best way i can put it it was weird especially since one of the things i don't as much as i like his sound instrumentation and choices stuff like that in jordan lucas as a artist mm -hmm. one of the things that is usually the turn off for me is whenever he gets a little too It's just showing my age, but whenever he gets a little too preachy, it's oh, yeah, no, for issue. sure. And uh, which he be having some stuff that's you know, that needs to be talked about, but it's one of those things where it's like, <sighs> I feel like I constantly hear stuff from this man <laughs> about I, I, the I, world that I'm just trying to, you know, I'm trying to listen and not think about the world. <laughs> So like I I but I respect the craft regardless. Oh yeah, so, for sure. First of first feelings aside, solid project. Uh, Sir dropped, and I need to listen to that because Sir has been very much in rotation for me since I have heard about him when uh Hair Down dropped. Mm -hmm. I've heard I first John Redcorn and Hair Down. I don't remember what I heard first, but I definitely remember like those were like the major things that got me into Sir and like solid projects ever since. But it's a he TDE guy. <laughs> Makes sense. Um, as far as other things going on around music, because I feel as if we should lightly touch this top uh, topic with the stuff that's going on and stuff like that. But like, <sighs> the Diddy situation is it's wild. Because uh, like the, worst, the, the worst first day was about it. The first day of it coming out, it's like, oh, wow, okay. Then the next day, it's like, whoa, really? And then by, like, day five, it's like, there's a list of what? How much How much more stuff did happen, like, allegedly happened or did happen? I is, it's, it's, it's a lot. I am, like I said, we are lightly touching that. What? Yeah. <laughs> it's just something yeah. that happened in the music space. And if more stuff comes out about it and i feel if necessary to talk on a gxp podcast of all things i will but for now it's just all of a sudden just, it, that is crazy and i would go about it's day. just wild 
though swinging back around to other music stuff i something i will am fine with talking about is this war that kidrick decided to start you know just on a random random monday was it monday that it dropped like monday at midnight or something let me don't let allow me to double check actually because I'm, I'm thinking it was like three days ago at this point that it dropped and it was a pro and the, the great part of it being a project where he is a feature because it's future in metro booming's project yeah and it was at the time of it dropping it was a hidden feature like most of the features in the project now most of them are shown i think so yeah. most people were weren't expecting just like oh random kendrick jump scare it dropped a week ago on the 20th okay At, so with that be, but with that being said it still was like it's quite a the, the nonsense has started i'm gonna see where everybody puts their alliances if they want to throw their hat into this we already know some people who are neutral in this because Big Sean literally just made a whole freestyle basically saying, I'm focused on me. I'm not worried about this. Yeah. <laughs> Which it was a hard freestyle. I will, like I said, Big Sean will probably be an underrated person because, like, of a co couple corny bars will probably just keep him in that underrated space, to be honest. And isn't, like, isn't Jid working on a collab album with Metro too? For what I heard, yes. So, and that's, that's just. Be awkward interesting because like i said jid is in a interesting spot because the way i see it if depending on how many rappers actually throw their hat into this madness mm -hmm. jid just showed up in an eminem video not too long ago which yeah. is the connection there eminem is aftermath which is dre who has close ties with kendrick so i think either one or two things gonna happen but he's dream but jade is dreamville so that's very yeah. important so either one or two things gonna happen either jade is going to just dart back to like the j cole side of things which or jade is going to be a neutral party which jade being a neutral party while also being dreamville would be wild that'll be like baby king being neutral yeah but even then, I would make the argument that, like, to be honest, I'm not trying to be that person, but sonically, J. Cole and Kendrick are comparable. Oh, yeah. In terms of stylist, in terms of style and lyric, style and particular lyricism, because they're both lyricists, J. Cole and Kendrick, but in a way, it's like, I still, I've always felt that J. Cole and Kendrick were kind of different bags that were I just know, for sure, lumped for into sure. the same, that were just kind of lumped into the same bag the way but they put things jid, together feels completely different but if jid is opposite from kendrick then that raises a different thing because i actually think jid at full at full tilt is definitely on par yeah it can definitely keep up with kendrick lyrically lyrically if not be one of the people who can actually box him lyrically which like i said will be insane if he if he actually gets i feel like that's it. always been like a some like manifested dream that people had like whether it be like a collab with jed or kendrick or if they happen to be in this awkward situation now just like having to be on opposite sides how would that go and now we'd probably produce some dope ass music but at the same time it's just like it was so random this is like this is the first time a potential rap beef and we haven't even got to the drake aspect of things because the people no. can get bull but this got into a, such a random ass rap beef that it's just like okay um yeah i don't know what's gonna happen and i don't even know if i particularly wanted this i wanted the collab album what is this <laughs> <laughs> man we're gonna men said we're gonna i ain't with trouble. this nice nice to each other shit. <laughs> so this is gonna be and then, like, as even female rap is in a current state right now. Oh, yeah. Similar. So Because at the beginning of the year, we had that whole, like, back and forth between Megan and Nikki. 
Megan and Nikki, and then people chose sides, and then there's a whole thing about it, and I'm not going to say names in particular, because, again, the whole putting women against each other thing, because mm-hmm. they might not actually have a stake in it, it's just that we know who who's, we know who's friends with who, yeah, and we know kind of who hangs out with who, so... And then Cardi having her like really big drop, re- like really big drops recently and stuff like that, and hinting at she has taken this somewhat. So that's in a state as well. So like like both the male side of rap and the female side of rap is a bit in a situation of we don't know what's gonna happen. We don't know if this is an actual war, if people are picking sides, if people are about to if, like it's definitely going places even if it it isn't a situation of not knowing what side like if we should be picking sides there's definitely some friendships between homies that like music that are getting tossed up and out thrown out the window right now (laughs) definitely like i can say that like i'm with big sean on this i am a neutral party i am just a listener i have no stakes in this This i'm just a humble spectator so uh, if we get some good music out of it hey i'm there on both sides i'm spectating but well i was not ready for any of this people are so, like maybe it was a friendly bell i don't think anything hendrix said was friendly <laughs> so look, again we were definitely We'll definitely say we'll definitely see, but if it's one thing that there was a big divide and stuff like that is the fact that like we know that Kendrick likes his we like know that Kendrick likes his old school rap. And one thing about old school rap is that East Coast versus West Coast might start back up. Cause <laughs> that's another thing. Cause we also gotta get into it because like what I am actually hoping, to be honest, it is this is a non factor to a lot of people, but this is also a factor to a couple people, the people who uh-huh. know. I am hoping ASAP and Pro Era don't get into it. <laughs> I'm hoping Joey Lee. I'm hoping Joey leaves this alone, and I am definitely hoping. Uh, I'm hoping Joey leaves this alone. I'm hoping ASAP leaves this alone. I hope none of them get into this. I don't want no parts. <laughs> just like I'm trying to just, I'm trying to get the people I like the most, listening wise, to stay out of this. I'm just trying to, you know vibe you know i'm not trying to be picking sides accidentally because last thing i need is because it be because i especially since i don't even know which way they would go because they're both east coast they're both east coast so like on one hand i'm like uh, like pro era and stuff like that might be <laughs> like you know lead towards Drayville. but the other hand i'm pretty sure joey's like pretty cool with kendrick so i don't know <laughs> same thing goes and oh yeah another thing denzel can stay out of this too i don't i don't want him i don't want him parts of that i don't need him in this bro you keep doing your own thing bro like it's like no it's already a problem because how much of dreamville i like and they're in it like by association yeah so like Earth Gang is in this by association. Jid might be in this by association. We definitely got J. Cole front and center. And then, like I said, we haven't even gotten to the Drake's. We haven't even gotten to the Drake stuff and who his allies where will be. So, like. An ally definitely with Jid and J. Cole is definitely 21 for sure. Another thing about that, too, is that now I think about it. If with Drake be part of it, depending if Drake and Wayne are still really cool, Wayne might be in it, too. Which is Which lining up for some interesting alliances to go back and forth. <laughs> there's a lot, there's like a lot of people in this situation that are just linked up. <laughs> so, like I said, that's definitely, that's definitely something. Because, like, even going to the female side, it's that situation where it's like, okay, we know Megan and Nikki are at it, mm-hmm. obviously. But we, in the same situation, we also know that Megan did Cardi are real cool, and they both at one point had an issue with Nikki. So it's like, I then we know stuff like or let it be like Ice Spice is cool with Nikki currently, stuff like that. It's like I don't know who's actually going where, but that's definitely a thing. Insane so. in music right now. This whole first half of the year has been insane for at least like hip-hop rap culture <laughs> this first half of the year i argue it has been insane for life <laughs> like 2024 is looking like 
I want to. 2024 is honestly started to look like a 2018 at first, and now it's looking like a 2012, 2010. <laughs> We're just regressing so, each month. <laughs> like, cause, so I genuinely don't know like 2012 ish where the pop stars were at it that's what we're at <laughs> that's where we're at right now we're just going through the cycle it's gonna go back to pop stars again in about four years and i don't want another r and i definitely don't want another r and b beef because r and b beefs usually end up with somebody in jail so like <laughs> i'd rather not with that though they could they, that genre can just be chill they could be friends i don't i don't know <laughs> I don't know how it always manages that It way. does, R&B because it, it's, it's such a juxtaposition, because R&B, gel, rap, get in the booth. <laughs> so, it's definitely, and then, I, man, no, 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 because, like, there's just so many, there's just so many things that can happen, so I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing how the year unfolds in that regard, and I, think for the most part that covers my opinions on music because like i said i'm really the other other stuff we could talk about stuff that's like kind of dark and i really don't want to touch on that right now Mm -hmm. so with that being said i think we could switch to gaming which to be honest do you want to start with my stuff because it's quicker do you want to start with your stuff first uh we can go through your stuff first you know so what you've been playing and (laughs) Apex has still been good. I've been enjoying myself still. We'd love to hear that. Started Spider-Man 2. Actually, I cleared out a decent amount of my... I cleared out some of my backlog. I actually finished, uh, like, one of the games, uh, Beyond Two Souls. And that was a... trip. that all you want to say about it? Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh... I did the other route of Night in the Woods, which Night in the Woods is an indie game that I really love. It's been near and dear to me. Um, and like I said, Spider-Man 2 has been an experience as well, and I've been really enjoying it. Um, it's so I fun. Other stuff I've been playing is just either replaying stuff or backlog. I've been, I did complete Phantom Liberty, and like it was a, I really enjoyed it, but I still think the Nomad ending is the best ending, personally. Unironically, that's the first ending that I got because that's just who I picked. <laughs> it's the first one I went for as well because it just I naturally like I feel like I'm out of feel like out of all the choices I naturally would have made a the choice that would have led me towards like the nomad ending. So And that was even before me finding out Panam was a nomad, but we're not even gonna get into that. So that definitely was that that definitely was how that went too. Um I enjoyed my I time with really, Phantom Liberty. Facts. <laughs> I'm gonna. I mean, I'm gonna re go through, replay, do everything, optimize, max, max min, max stuff. Figure yeah. out what I can do. But like, I'm just can't clearing some stuff out. I've also been playing a lot of 2K24. Oh yeah, I want to hear that. My rise is really good this year. It, That's all I've been hearing. That it's genuinely really good. Like they went ham on it this year compared to last year. So many paths so many things answered so many di- so many dialogue things is touched there's even actual wwe lore that gets touched upon because you know like wwe has this like yeah cloud lore that's like a thing but like it's not addressed on air for some reason but we all know about it like the supernatural yeah. force like even stuff like the supernatural force behind wwe and how it possesses different people in different eras i yeah. just like i wouldn't even think about that as a thing until i actually thought about it so like it I so so far I completed the I completed the woman route the women's division route of my rise and I'm halfway through the men's route and the men's route is hilarious because I will say this and I'm going to mentally prepare you for this when you do get around to 2K24 uh-huh. like uh WWE 2K24 um you can try as hard as you can to make your male character a nice guy. I don't think you're supposed to play a face. It oh, really? Even the knife answers are kind of dickish. Like, <laughs> yeah, like it feels as if you are really trying to be the second coming of Roman Reigns. Oh and wow! I and I, considering what the justification of the story is, because the 
the basic premise is this is just of this off top is that Roman relinquished his title to go do to go to go do things. Mm-hmm. And you win title. And dude, after you win the title and stuff like that, Roman's heckling you like you'll never be you'll never be as good as me, even if I, I relinquished it and stuff <laughs> like that. You still you're still trash. He he literally checks in on Twitter and DMs you that you're trash at random. It's <laughs> crazy. <laughs> Just but, oh look, I know, got a notification. Oh, it, Roman said I'm ass again. <laughs> the amount of the amount of petty this involved is insane. And then you get it, you like in the first, I want to say in the first like thirty minutes, you get into it with Cody. It's crazy. Oh wow. <laughs> yeah, so like, and I still like I said, I still haven't gotten deep into it. Like I'm twenty I wanna say I'm thirty two hours in to the actual game itself, like playing the game in general. But mm-hmm. I'm twenty eight hours in twenty eight of those hours is probably just my rise stuff. And yeah. the fact that it's like that many hours of me just doing my rise and like not even and I haven't even done all the side quests, so it's probably longer. And I haven't yeah. even touched showcase mode, which I've heard people complaints about showcase mode and I already see it. Uh got and it. Stuff with the stuff that I've seen. It's an objective checklist. It's so many objectives. They I hate objective-based showcase mode so much. They need to tone that down, like seriously. Like I miss when it was like maybe four objectives of like major spots that happen in the match and stuff like that. Cause it's stuff, there, some of these objectives is stuff you would just do playing the game. Yeah. Like throw them into the ring post. Like, okay, I understand, but like, why am I doing this at this particular time? We just didn't have and then matches. nowadays it's even more specific throw them into the northeast ring pool and run follow up clothesline them <laughs> it's like I, I i don't need to like in all honesty i promise you if i really wanted if i really wanted that particular experience of being able to like understand the like ring at the like understand the objective and like execute a match Mm-hmm. I would just go into being a professional wrestler. Relax. <laughs> like at this point, I should just go to WWE hit, next. Like <laughs> hit the like hit the like I would hit the gym, get my stuff together, and then just this is like <laughs> it don't it don't it don't take all that. It don't take all that. It does not. <laughs> well, now I gotta ask. Uh, since you brought up the thing about the men's not really like you know. You're picking face options, but they're they're clearly leaning towards the other way. Is it more like clear difference in the female route, whether like heel answers and face answers? So with the women's route, it's like she the women's route character is kind of a tweener. Uh, she does heal stuff on accident quite frequently. <laughs> like, sorry for the spoiler, but and yeah spoilers are a thing uh sorry for a spoiler but like for example there is a whole thing where you're trying to become a stronger and better wrestler for the wwe brand Uh so you try to find your version of brutality and who else to go seek out some brutality than rhea ripley so you end up tagging with rhea ripley oh no and doing heel stuff because that's what she does (laughs) and mind you Basically, your character is just trying to better herself, but she gets really into it. Uh huh. Like she starts feeling up. like the the dark shit. Just <laughs> so that's where it's always going there. You know, and yeah, it that that's the that's the sort of character that the the women's my right. Very is. impressionable. <laughs> Honestly, yeah. So that's so she's kind of a tweener. Like I feel like maybe you could go a little more face with the route. Like I had to explore it, especially mm-hmm. since there's so many ways to go about things. Like for example, like there's a time in that same in that same time period. There's a time where like the game basically splits off into three different main main stories. Oh wow! And if you complete one main story before another main story, there's a com- there's comments throughout that story that reference the fact that you did the other one first oh wow that's cool and and that even goes down to like there's because there's three there's i did the last one which was like the live morgan route there's the rhea ripley route the live morgan route and uh alexa bliss route Uh uh-huh i did the rhea route and then the alexa bliss then i did live so during the live route 
literally stuff from the Alexa Bliss and the Rhea Ripley route gets mentioned sometimes back to back. So oh, like wow. they literally record it for it, whatever order you go for. So no, I would say that Two K Twenty Four has a lot of effort put into it. The only thing that I have an issue with with the game is two things: while the menu looks great, mm -hmm. function sucks sometimes. Oh no! And loading in assets like the flip out at random. Everything else is everything else has been made a lot better. They even fixed hit detection because hit detection was oh really? It's better than angry. last year's because I know it, last year that's what we were complaining about a lot. Hit detection is a lot better than last year's. For example, like when you are doing a, when you're doing a, you know, a, like a, a t like a pull toss kind of like have them yeah. run. When you when you toss them, I know the actual term is just slipping me. Yeah. When you toss them and then they hit the ropes and stuff like that, there is literally a setting to where it, you can't really flub it so you do you that situation where they used to just bump into each other but even though you press the button doesn't oh thank god <laughs> so you don't just look like a goober trying to toss people into the ropes anymore <laughs> and the fact that super finishers are back or tossing items the amount of times i have picked up a chair and just yeeted it across the ring to hit someone in the face <laughs> has been killing me especially <laughs> it's even funnier when they're on the top rope you grab like a soda can off the announce desk and go <laughs> just and do they just off. like fall off <laughs> yes it's so great i for example um it was a situation where shotzi was on the top rope i went outside and they were just still on the top rope i went outside grabbed a kendo stick that i just had laying on the floor picked it up threw the kendo stick it literally twirls for a bit it hit shots and she just falls backwards over it and it was hilarious <laughs> how about looks in this game are they up to date or are they still a little behind like they usually are they're pretty up to date okay i have a complaint though they did bailey dirty Oh no, and what happened? Face related or? Her hair. I don't know who was the hair modeler or who worked on Bailey in particular, but she needs to file a complaint. That's messed up. Like, it's that rough? Dude, hold up. It's, I, I legit, <laughs> I know we said my sex was going to be shorter, but dude. No, it's fine. <laughs> I legit need to grab this because I'm like, what? What did they do? <laughs> this is like Bailey doesn't deserve this. <laughs> Especially in the spot that she's in right now. <laughs> like, bro. I'm not even downselling this either. Like, look at this. Wow, that is rough. Jesus. I don't like, you can tell it's Bailey, but... Ugh, Jesus. Love you, Bailey, just, but the game did not... Jesus Christ. That this, did not, the that's more not I Bailey. look at it... I don't, I don't care. That's not Bailey. It was like, they did her dirty, and it needs to be fixed. <laughs> I stand by that. I, I don't even know. If, I don't even care if you use like one of her old, her really old hairstyles. I don't care if you put the twenty three hairstyle back on her. That's not it. Yeah. Jesus. And it's crazy because hair, like the way hair works and moves in this game, move in this game have gotten so much better. But yet this madness was allowed to pass through. Somebody skipped. Somebody skipped the day of work. Someone someone rushed or yeah someone skipped a day someone checked out early because like hold up let me grab somebody else because like everyone else looks fine for the most part i assume right i'm i'm gonna give you a different i'm gonna give you a different example real quick uh-huh because this is like this is a this is a good example for comparison like I don't know how they. I don't know what happened here. If it loads, takes a little longer than I expected, or did it just not download? I'm not sure. Oh wait. Oh, it saved as a weird. It saved as a weird file. That's why. Uh. I'm gonna just grab it. I keep picture. looking over at the Bailey picture. It's just like Jesus. I, it's the worst. The more I look at it. 
I know, man. I know. And they got her ring gear and everything perfect. So she looked good until you look at her hair. It's like, why did they do that? For example, for, for, for comparison, this is Liv. Same game. Wow, that just straight up looks... That's good. <laughs> that's Liv. Yeah, right? So, no. Bailey... No. <laughs> I know she has they got, that's like gotta be a right patch. Now. If I was Bailey, I would ask for a patch when like the first set of like season pass characters come out. <laughs> definitely, definitely. So, but yeah, that's the that's that's the main just what I've been up to. I'm my main thing is now is just finishing up Spider Man, finding other stuff to stream, and like waiting, looking for some, waiting for some of the other releases, and also getting around for getting around to persona 3 when i do actually get it so that's gonna be fun if anything depending on when you get it we might actually end up playing it around like the same time because <laughs> i'm like on a break yeah. right now after the amount of time i put into final fantasy man 10 hour streams back to back you are insane i i know i can do it but like it's just the more i kept playing the more it just kept going. I guess at this point, I might as well talk about my time with Final Fantasy. <laughs> yeah, because I will say this. I've upped my stream time to two to four hours, and that's been a lot for me. So I know 10 is crazy. But yeah, go uh, go ahead. I'm listening. Oh, do you want to start with Persona first, or do you want to start with uh, Final Fantasy? I guess we can go in order, because, yeah. So, well, I mean, before Persona, I made sure I finished Phantom Liberty because I didn't want that on the backlog any longer than it had to be <laughs> when all these other games are coming out, which I enjoy my time with Phantom Liberty. I liked all the new weapons you got. Outfits are cool. Story's good, obviously. They cooked. They brought the game back around. <laughs> uh, on to Persona 4. I finally finished that and like from coming from last podcast game is good i see why everyone talks about it the way they do characters didn't age well but you know what that's cool i guess i but it's so weird because like i it's like is what yo for yosuke is definitely one of those people where like i want to be like i want to like you and i probably would still be cool with you but like you but it's just this one to... characteristic of a certain type of people that rubbed you the wrong way. Yeah, so like I need, I, sometimes I be needing Yosuke to just like, eh, man, no. <laughs> but then on the flip it. side, then you got like cool ass people like Kanji. All my homies love Kanji. Kanji dope. Facts. <laughs> yeah, this, yeah, Kanji ended up being like, I think my favorite character besides fucking giggly ass bitch Yukiko, bro. And that's my that's my favorite out the crew besides you himself, honestly, because you himself is funny. Like, I know. Oh my god, some of the you. options you have is you. The protagonist tends to be pretty funny anyway, but like you is a special breed of you know, bro. <laughs> bro, like, it's, it's like it's any chance he gets, guy. he could just like riz up anyone for no reason. Because even at some point, I think it was like when teddy was staying over at our place for a bit and then he asked a question about something and one of the options was like do i tell him or do i show him and i'm like, like you what? why you know what fuck it i'm i'm going all the way in with it <laughs> it's, like, <laughs> it's definitely like one thing that can always give credit to the persona guys that you can definitely tell what the, even when you with a silent protagonist, you can still tell what their their personalities are. Yeah. Because, like, a Joker was, like, a Joker is, like, kind of snarky and a little evil, but he keeps it to himself. Yeah. And you was just... Yeah, to you was just the out there 100% of the chat. time. <laughs> time. Man, the chat. He's just... It's, it's, you the chat, bro. It's, 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 just get bored of that. Bro, it's just he it's like he doesn't have a filter and I kinda love it. Like he doesn't filter shit out about like holding that like should I say that? No, he's like, I'm gonna say that. <laughs> it is so good. So good. And then I I get why people don't like Teddy, but I, I don't think it rubbed me as wrong like as it would people like back when they first played it. Cause like don't get me wrong, Teddy's like 
not up there in terms of my favorite characters but like you know he has his moments towards the end of the game and, and like yeah <laughs> teddy is a unexplainable like disturbance to me and will always be that <laughs> and it sucks because i like their voice actor so much understood <laughs> is goaded <laughs> pretty sure let me make sure I'm right, because I promise you if I said the wrong name, I'm going to be very sad. <laughs> I want to say that you're right. I'm pretty sure it is Sam. Hopefully. Otherwise, then i have remembered incorrectly. Okay, it was Sam. I didn't lose my mind. I was like, yeah, that sounds like <laughs> Sam. I was like, Sam Regal is goaded. But regardless, but at the same time, I was like, oh, I can't tolerate whatever dude Teddy's on my screen. I don't know why he deserves me this much. He bothers me. I want to kick him like a ball. So... Yeah. Yeah, but, I get that for sure. Not as more, not as Morgana bad. So. Yeah. It's crazy how it, it's less. Morgana did less than Teddy, but the thing that Morgana does is way, way more. Just like it's, it just shoots up past Teddy somehow, for the little bit that it does happen. <laughs> mm hmm. Mm hmm. And then all the way to the end of the game, I know people haven't, like, played it, so I'm not gonna, like, you know, go out full spoilers, but, like, the whole, like, last stretch of the game into, like, the last dungeon when you're like, oh, well, that's the truth, and then you're like, no, actually, this was who in charge of it, and then it's, like, goes even further, I'm like, what? To the yeah. point of, like, it was you? The most random, non-thought character I thought would have been? It's definitely, it's definitely funny look. It's definitely funny looking back at being one of like the person, being like one of the persona people. It's like, it's 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 just always interesting to see new people, new people play a certain persona, and or like g getting into like what the getting into like the different like stages of it, stuff, stuff like that. Because especially yeah. since you played, especially since you're playing backwards, so you played five, four, and you're going three next. Yeah, three, three is, is the a, next one on the list. <laughs> three is an experience. <laughs> that's that's what I've heard, and hearing that it's mostly like non-change from the original to the remake. Apparently, I'm in for a time. Because <laughs> I will say this: um, after thinking about it, because originally my taste on it was my original like taste on Persona games was like two, five, three. But now, we, but now it's kind of settled back into two, then three, then five, uh -huh. then four. Which four? Don't get me wrong, four is four is bad. It's just like timing like when I played the games. Yeah, yeah. So the timing when I played the games and the stuff that's talked about three is three being one of my favorites of the fact they said they kept a lot of stuff non-changed, but they made better made certain things better. And what I have seen from the UI so far has been sending. So I'm definitely I'm, happy. I'm probably going to have like a whole section like on first stream of playing it. Just like going through literally every options. Like the confidant section. Like the settings in the menu. Just, just like. I do that with every like Persona game now. Because even going from 4 to 5. There was a like a definite change for sure. But like it's still somewhat nice. But like Persona 5 definitely like set the standard for like. Alright the UI has got to be crazy <laughs> yeah persona uis are probably going to be based a modeled off of five until something else revolutionizes it again to be honest yeah Hell, it might spill over by the, my guess it might spill over into smt as well judging by how they're going about it i can definitely see that because even with the that new ip game that atlas is putting out the re-zero one that ui looks nuts too just off like the trailers that they've shown even like getting new like acquaintances for like your party and stuff the ui looks nuts so i think that's just the standard they're going with for which i'm not mad at i love me some pretty looking ui agreed like game design is very game design is very fun to look at and stuff like that so i'm very much appreciate i'm very much appreciative too. but honestly i'm just glad i am really glad you enjoyed for it and like that the four story has so much to it especially since there are so many side games that also were just like canon and so much stuff that goes into it with persona is it's a whole full rabbit hole it's, it, there is just so much 
Oh yeah, yeah. That's why I'm I'm looking forward to see like how this goes forward because yeah, I'm I'm looking forward to three and I'm kind of just like looking forward to like how things link up because I know like the the one thing I know about Arena and Ultimax is that there are three and four characters in it. Mm-hmm. And since I know it's extremely difficult to like play like the PQ games where there's actual crossover, that's as close as I'm gonna get to like those characters interacting probably. Yeah, but it's still it's still cool to see. So like I think the it's 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 gonna be it's gonna be pleasant. But like I will say this: prepare yourself to just be kind of like P four Ultimax slash Arena is kind of a visual novel with fighting game. I mean, so, like, it's a it's, it's a, a video of... it's a fighting game with a story from like years ago at this point. <laughs> oh no, it has a story. Oh yeah, no, I'm for sure. But I'm, it was like of... around the time where like fighting games weren't like known for like the stories. I, I'm guessing. <laughs> oh, that's the thing. It's a lot of story, but they didn't know how to trans. But I would argue they don't know how to. They didn't know how to transition it into like gameplay cleanly so there's a lot of story but there's also fighting to eat so it's like it's, it's just good to be a, it's just a weird balance but that's the only complaint i have about it oh about got it. it everything got else it. is great i'm looking forward to that i guess yeah. now i should get into Definitely. the big ass chunky game oh yeah I'm tuned into this final fantasy 7 rebirth feels like a game that shouldn't exist <laughs> It's there's just so much packed into it, gameplay wise, story wise, content wise, side quest wise. It's just it feels like an anomaly, and I'm not even like the biggest Final Fantasy VII person. Like I played remake, and then I went back to play like the OG one after I finished remake because obviously it was until after it was done people realized it was a sequel to the original games. And then caught up on that now that i like have know what like og was about it's kind of insane how much they kept the same from the og in like this part because it just feels like a faithful remake for the like 90 percent of the game but like those 10 percent do some wild stuff story-wise I've Timelines, heard. multiverses, it's insane. <laughs> I've definitely heard because I'm not. Hmm. I don't know if I'm going to talk about this on stream. I'm not a Final Fantasy VII show, per se. Oh, yeah, no, same. I, like I'm, I'm, I don't even think after all the games I've played, I would say I'm like a shill. I just didn't. I acknowledge it was a good game. <laughs> I, I enjoy Final Fantasy, yeah. So, like. But one of the things about it, though, is that, like, it's definitely, from what I've heard and what I've seen, it's definitely, like, like, again, which is, this game is, that game is, seems to be an experience. So, I do enjoy that they put, that they put so much work into it and stuff like that. And I'm glad that, and honestly, I'm glad that there's a decent space in between the times, because it does feel like they've been, like, rushing it, which is nice as well. Yeah. Like, or, like, crunching it, which is, which just seems good, so... Cause I know it's gonna be wild to say that. Well, not wild, but like ever since the price jumped like by ten bucks into like new generation for games being like seventy, like off rip, this feels like the first game that's like been worth the price jump and almost seems <laughs> low key undersold. But like not really. I'm just it just feels like there's that much in the game that it feels like I'm underpaying for it. But at the same time, it feels like finally a game that's worth like that 70 dollar price tag with you just get so much packed in there's a card yep. game that's not even main story stuff it's just a side quest but it's so fun that i want them to bring on everything make it its own game i will play it <laughs> oh trust i do think i i've heard because i do and seen a bit of it i do think queen's blood as a mobile game or something would go absolutely crazy it would i would play like i i don't play snap as much as i used to but like i still play that and it gives me like marvel snap vibes it's it's quick it's snappy it's not too hard to like understand and 
you just get in and out even like going from like card game like fight to fight it's just really intuitive and it's genuinely fun that's good and story-wise i know the game is still new like game came out a month ago it feels new because i just finished it i'm not gonna get into like the ending but man it feels like they saw the just theory crafting at, that people did at the end of the remake and said what if we do it again but more because they know that this it's for sure gotta be that because there's only one more game and it's not like they can do that after that game because i know at the end of a trilogy you want all the questions answered so with that being said, it's like, would you say that Final Fantasy VII Remake would already be, like, Game of the Year ten uh, contender? I'm not gonna lie, yeah. I would be, I'm gonna be genuinely shocked if it doesn't win Game of the Year. And that's knowing what's coming out this year and what came out this year. Because I've yeah. seen, like, the small things of, like, Persona 3 and people loved it and saying that, you know, it's faithful, it's good, it plays good it's pretty much the way to play it now and then like other games for me which i thought was going to be my game of the year like stellar blade that's coming out next month i played the demo before they yanked it <laughs> um i think it, it is the game of the year with how much you get out of it and how much time you can get out of it and not get bored with it everything's fun gameplay feels nice you can play the game so many different ways on different playthroughs, different builds. I think it is up there right now for Game of the Year for me, and I'd be shocked if it doesn't win. So, yeah, and in all honesty, I feel the same. Because, like, anything else that's, like, everything else that I'm looking forward to, for the most part, besides, like, you know, actually getting around to Persona, is the fact that, like, additions to games that are already out, yeah. So, as far as that goes, and I, unless they drop something extremely crazy, like towards the end of the year, like they're just like, oh yeah, by the way, we're shadow we're dropping this. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, we're shadow dropping like a new God of War or something, or some crazy stuff like that. Yeah. I don't see a lot of heavy hitters with heavy names like that coming out that would be the full competition of Final Fantasy VII Re uh, Rebirth. So it's definitely yeah. like, I definitely also think that, and I haven't even really played it, but I, but for what I know and what I've seen, yeah, it seems crazy. So that and is like I'm something. said, this is coming from someone that didn't even grow up playing the original. I played the original Final Fantasy after I played remake that came out. What was it like 2020? No, it was like, mm -hmm. yeah, it was 2020. Around uh, actually, I can check, I can check that right now. Yeah, I'm a relatively new fan, and that's just. That's not even like, like character biased. I it's genuinely just a good game, and you can't like argue that it. Like little critiques is maybe like traversal around the world, but even if that, it's just minor things that doesn't like kill the experience. Remake released in March of twenty twenty. That's even crazy to think about. They brought this game out with how much is in it and how big and massive the world is in just four years yeah almost exactly four years because it was insane. march 3rd uh it was march 3rd 2020 from what i'm seeing for remake and rebirth rebirth was... release release date it was like the end was... of february it was oh yeah it released on i remember it released on my birthday so so it's like a little under four years and they dropped that it's insane which means if which means if the dev schedule is similar we might add probably five to six years to that to figure out how big that last game is uh, i've seen people talk be... about it because the they think people said the best way to go about it is the Final Fantasy 30th anniversary for seven specifically. That's in 2027. So three years. So around three years, maybe three years, February or March. Yeah, people are either guessing that we'll probably get a 
first look at that event, whatever it is, or release at that time, and get like a reveal at like Summer Games Fest like a year before that. Because three years might not be too crazy, considering the fact that I'm if I if I'm remembering seven correctly, you are past the second game. Rebirth is the chunkiest part of the game. I remember it actually like being a little bit smaller towards the end with how they divvied everything up. Yeah, I've heard for the most part like the first two game, like the first two parts that we got right now are basically disc one. And then part three is going to be like disc two and three because apparently disc three of like the OG was mostly just cutscenes and stuff anyways for the time. Mm -hmm. So based on that, people are saying since they already have a basis for like the whole world already, they just basically have to add on to the section that they already built and add an airship to that and then you know just add the other sections that we didn't get to go to so they pretty much have like the entire section which is probably why it's still gonna take like three years again which is an insane turnaround either way yeah but yeah no i love my time with the game i think my final run time with it was around close to like 120 hours i played that game longer than persona 4 my persona 4 run was like 98 hours oh wow which yeah that that about tracks for persona 4 to be honest yeah it was yeah this this game in general pretty much ran on par with like my persona 5 run my persona 5 run was like 112 but that was because I already played vanilla and pretty much knew what I was doing to the story for the most part in fights. I mean, for us it's related, but goddamn the music in this game. Holy shit. It's so good. Like, they brought some tracks from remakes again, but like a lot of the new tracks are just so good. Because there's like a world theme per region that you're in. And then... There's battle remixes of said world theme every time you get into a fight. And like the transition between just like the regular theme into battle. And then once the battle finishes, it goes back to just the regular world theme. The music is just so good in this game. And I assume it's, I'm assuming it's pretty seamless too. Oh yeah, it's really good. And the most insane thing is you can pretty much go through the entire length of the game and not run into a loading screen. Like there's yeah. like in-game loading but not and then you can travel between region to region and like fast travel like the longest i wo waited was like two seconds that's insane but it's just technically things, shouldn't exist but yeah go ahead one of the biggest things that the generation had was loading loading has gotten a lot better oh yeah that was like one of the big flexes in the marketing for even like Spider-Man 2. You could just pick anywhere on the map and just fast travel there once you unlocked it. And it's like seamless. But I think that's all I need to say on Rebirth without like, you know, going into super spoilers. Because it's a long game and I know people definitely not finished it yet. Yeah, so maybe we'll maybe we'll touch back onto that in like after some bit of time but like that is definitely something that's like interesting to see and i'm still gonna give it a try it'll be a lot later than what other than other people and stuff like that and, probably, my and with probably with a lot of free time too <laughs> mm -hmm. so i definitely but i at the same time i'm still happy that rebirth came out the way that a lot of people wanted it to mm -hmm. and i'm also happy that it just well came out good no, uh, there is something that was like weird to me because I was trying to check something just to make sure, and I found it hilarious but interesting. So, uh huh. Apparent. So I, for whatever reason, I was looking at stuff and just checking for eighty eight rising because I wanted was looking into some releases. I've also been diving into a lot of eighty eight as of yeah. recently, and their current their their artist list is. I didn't know that this was uh. I didn't know that this was the list. So their current signed artists are Atarashi E, Gako, BB, Chunha, Dumbfounded. Idol is apparently under 88 technically. Yeah, they're Idol under them is. as in like terms of like English selling label. 
Higher Brothers, Jackson Wayne, Joe G, Keith Ape, Lexi Lou, Lauren Millie, Nikki, Rhyme So, Rich Brian, Sayori. I could never say their name correctly, but S4, S4AM, Stephanie Poetry, Warren Hugh, and Yelona Garcia. I didn't know that August left 88. Oh, wow. I didn't even... Really? The name's not there? He's listed under... He's listed under former artist. Huh. I wonder if it was on good terms or... I assumed it was on good terms. I yeah, see because... Why it would have been. Yeah. Wait, hold up. Oh, he didn't leave. Okay, that's sad. Oh, no. I... I just learned that August apparently died in August of last year, actually. How did I not hear about that? I'm... That's wild to me, genuinely. I I feel like I didn't hear anything about that. Especially, like, on my, like, like, feeds on anywhere. I'm just as lost, so I don't know. I'm... I'm... But I'm not getting too deep into that because I didn't want to kill the vibe. But like that def I didn't, I found out here, so I didn't throw me off. Um, uh, uh, R.I.P. Then I, I didn't, I didn't know. Same. Um, but yeah, I was just looking for new things because like I know, um, I'm there's a couple releases that I am looking forward to that are coming mm-hmm. up because like I feel as if we are about to get a Audrey Nuna drop, a uh, Audrey Nuna drop. Which is unrelated to 88. Mm-hmm. Kind of. But at the same time, I was like, I was just looking at Andre Nuna, you know, Andre, it, it, some of the stuff, some of the links I was looking at just tilted me back to 88. And then I was like, well, Brian might be dropping something soon too. And then looking at the stuff, and Ata Rashi E is definitely prepping for something big. So, oh, yeah, like, no, it feels like yeah. in the past like month or two, I've seen more of them than like usual, I should say so definitely like it's gonna be interesting which to be fair i am hoping i am hoping if a project does happen there's an atarashi e megan the stallion song i stand by it i want it i want it i feel like that would just be so cool like not even us like looking too deep into it because they did like that TikTok thing together but i the the high octane energy of atarashi e with megan would be crazy <laughs> That'd be so, such an out of nowhere like collab, but that would put Ariashi E in such a weird like shoot up in like a view of people. Facts. Because <laughs> like, it's like, oh, who's this that Megan collabed with? And that's all it takes. And it might, and to me personally, it might be wilder than the BTS collab. Oh yeah, for people, sure. Like, yeah, they were just that big. They're of course, yeah, something like this was gonna happen. Because Aragashi like, seems like still like under mainstream for sure. Like they're they're very up and coming. So like I want some big things for them. I really want to see Aragashi <laughs> succeed. And like I, but and it's something I didn't really talk a lot about. But I am a, a, a and like what got me is like I said, what got me into this rabbit hole first was looking for Audrey Nuna stuff, and I am a big Audrey Nuna fan. I'm hoping that whatever this project ends up being, especially after that amazing Tizo touchdown feature, especially Oh, after that was that so amazing, good. Especially after that amazing song, even before that with Cellulite, I need, I need this project. I know this is a project and I need it. <laughs> Her vibe, the vibe is... She's yeah. been, she's been great for so long. Like, I found her through, well, I found her through a combination of two things, uh, like, it was Comic Sans, but I was late, but also a collab she did with Saba. Oh, really yeah. Good. So, top again. So, I definitely am, like, looking forward to anything she puts out. But For that, sure. That, I think that covers everything we wanted to talk about in this episode of GXP. We definitely went longer than I thought we would, but you know that works out for me. I because we both thought it was gonna be a shorter episode. <laughs> yeah, definitely. But yeah, no. Luckily, luckily, flow state just happened. But with <laughs> that being said, I will be making. Well, I guess we're just making our sign off. So pretty much. Thank you all for watching as usual. I hope you guys enjoyed listening or watching. You know. 
background doing stuff uh subscribe if you want to stay up to date with whenever we upload one of these because at this point we don't have a schedule but we're trying to make one and i and to be honest you'll be seeing me a lot on twitch i stream in the dead end times of night so sometimes you might miss me but in all honesty that's where i am no, twitch at twitch.tv slash melody ghost and that's where i'm basically at and i'm also working on i'm not gonna tell you when i'm not gonna give a time because it might take forever it might be next week but i am currently working on a video for my melody ghost channel as well which is going to be covering a topic that i find extremely interesting i'll just leave it at that and links like that are always in the description below first two links are always that for sure whether you, you want to find us anywhere and yeah with that being said we're done <laughs> thank y'all for watching see you guys next time later